Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, The Funeral. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. On a quiet, empty street late at night, an electric delivery scooter slowly makes its way forward. The driver is Chun, and she arrives at a department store for her night shift, clearly exhausted from work. Unexpectedly, her phone rings, but when she answers, there's no one on the other end. The store's automatic door suddenly welcomes an invisible customer, but the security camera reveals that Chun is the only person there. As she questions whether she's hearing things, the door closes, bidding farewell. She wonders if the door is malfunctioning, but when she waves her hand to test it, it seems to be working perfectly. Just as she resumes work with a puzzled look on her face, a series of strange events occur. The milk refrigerator door opens by itself, a can of drink rolls down from the storage room upstairs, and she suspects someone has sneaked inside. She rushes upstairs to confront the intruder, but when she turns on the light, it flickers twice before dying completely. A shadowy figure flashes before her eyes, so she quickly pulls out her phone and turns on the flashlight, inspecting the warehouse full of goods. However, she doesn't find any intruders. But just as she breathes a sigh of relief, a dead hand reaches out from behind the stack of goods in the elevator. She jumps in fright, only to realize it was all a dream when she opens her eyes and sees her co-worker laughing at her. Her co-worker scolds her, saying that she's either late or asleep on the job and living like a freeloader. In reality, Shun is a single mother who got pregnant at a young age. She's unwilling to reveal the child's father and not one have an abortion, so she's kicked out of her father's house. She raises her daughter, Joy, all alone. Joy has kidney problems and needs frequent dialysis, so the surgery fees have become a significant burden. As a result, Chun has to work three part-time jobs every day. One night, as Chun goes out to deliver food, Joy waits for her downstairs. However, after she leaves, Joy encounters something terrifying. A severed head falls before her eyes. By the time Chun returns from her delivery, her child is nowhere to be seen. Joy, panic-stricken, walks hurriedly down the street, only hearing a faint voice calling her name. Fortunately, it's Chun who catches up to her. Joy claims that something is following her, but Chun doesn't believe her and thinks the child is just throwing a tantrum. Back at home, Chun comforts Joy, gives her medicine, and puts her to bed. Exhausted, she still has to work overtime folding cardboard boxes. Sadly, due to the department store being overcrowded, she gets fired, adding to her financial strain. Late one night, Chun received a phone call from her uncle named Uncle Lee, informing her of her grandfather's passing and urging her to come back and pay her respects. The next day, Chun takes her child back to their hometown. On the way, Joy throws a tantrum, angry that Chun never told her about their relatives. Chun doesn't explain, and at that moment, Uncle Lee arrives to pick them up. After getting in the car, Chun learns that her grandfather has been dead for four days, and the funeral arrangements are being handled by Uncle Lee's priest friend. In the back seat, Joy remains quiet, only noticing a handwritten notebook on the seat. By nightfall, Chun and her daughter finally arrive at their old house. In the main hall, the priest chants Buddhist scriptures, while Chun's parents and her sister and brother-in-law kneel behind him. All four of them look displeased to see Chun return. She enters the room with a stern face, only to have the ancestral tablet suddenly fall down. When she picks it up, the writing appears to be sideways, but upon blinking, everything returns to normal. She doesn't pay much attention to the incident and takes her daughter to rest in her old room. The room is dusty, but the mirror is surprisingly clean. As Joy unpacks, she hears a noise outside the door and sees a shadowy figure pass by. When she goes out to investigate, she finds no trace of anyone, just a chilly wind blowing behind her, carrying a spine-chilling voice. However, when she goes back into her room, she sees no one, only noticing a pair of withered black feet under the bed when she looks down. Joy tries to grab something for self-defense, but suddenly finds a bloody bite mark on her hand. She screams in terror, and Chun rushes to her side. However, there's no wound on Joy's hand, and the door suddenly slams shut. Chun cautiously opens it, only to find her father standing there, questioning her return and expressing disgust and blame in his tone. Chun says she'll leave after her grandfather's seven-day mourning period, and the father and daughter part on bad terms. The next morning, none of the family members pay any attention to Chun, hiding in the kitchen to eat their meals. Chun can only take her child to find Uncle Lee. He advises Chun to visit her grandfather first, while Joy, frightened from the previous night's events, stays outside playing with her phone. Uncle Lee chats casually with her, saying that when he was young, he used to play pranks, pretending to be a ghost, and when he grew up, he became a magician. 
He then performs a few magic tricks for Joy. Meanwhile, Shun secretly cries in front of her grandfather's coffin. She didn't come back for her family's approval, but because her grandfather was the one who loved her the most. Even after cutting ties with her parents, she still remembers the kind old man. It's a shame that the person she cherished is gone, and all that's left before her is a lifeless body. Chun still needs to address the issue of feeding herself and her daughter. With no other options, they go to a restaurant outside. While they haven't even eaten yet, Chun overhears some locals gossiping about how her family's old house is rumored to be haunted, just a few days after her grandfather's death. Meanwhile, her parents hold a meeting at home, determined to drive Chun away before the seventh day of mourning. Her mother is somewhat reluctant, thinking that if it wasn't for her husband's stubbornness, their daughter wouldn't have left home for so many years. However, when her mother goes to the morning hall at noon, she doesn't pay any attention to Chun. Chun's sister even accuses her of coming back to claim her inheritance and trying to gain sympathy with her daughter. Chun has no words to defend herself. At mealtime, Chun tries to talk to her mother, saying that Joy's health is not good and she cannot always eat out. She wants to stay home and eat with the family. However, their conversation is overheard by her father, who scolds her for not being able to solve such a simple issue after being away from home for over a decade. Her sister also harbors resentment and urges their parents not to care about Chun's well-being. As night falls, Joy helps fold lotus flowers in the morning hall. She notices that the silk cloth on the coffin has fallen off and bravely covers it back. Unexpectedly, the cloth falls off again. This time, she properly adjusts it, and when throwing it forward, the silk cloth covers a figure that seemed to appear out of thin air. Joy's heart races, and when she tries to leave, she ends up back in front of the coffin. The figure covered by the silk cloth keeps following her. Luckily, her great-uncle, Uncle Lee, comes to her rescue, and Joy escapes the eerie situation. She tells Chun about the strange noises she keeps hearing, but Chun dismisses them as normal countryside sounds, maybe even insects hiding somewhere. After putting her daughter to bed, Chun finds her mother standing outside their door with a bowl of rice. It turns out that her mother, seeing Chun being treated coldly, wanted to comfort her and even advises her to leave as soon as possible. The funeral doesn't need many helpers, and a lot has happened over the years that doesn't concern Chun. Her mother implies that staying might involve her in more trouble. Chun, of course, doesn't catch the hint. After Chun and her daughter rest for a while, the priest continues his rituals in the morning hall. Suddenly, Chun's door is pushed open, but there is nothing at the entrance. She closes the door, hears noises outside, and walks out puzzled. She notices her sister's door open, but before she can investigate, noises come from the attic. She climbed up to the attic, finding only a toy car innocently knocked over. However, this didn't scare Chun. She picked up a family portrait and reminisced about the past when her grandfather was still alive and her father had a close relationship with him. As she focused on the picture, she sensed something was wrong. Suddenly, her father in the photo stood up, his face covered in blood. Frightened, Chun quickly discarded the portrait. Meanwhile, Joy encountered strange occurrences as well. The bed frame violently shook, and her blanket was inexplicably pulled away. Thinking her mother was playing a trick on her, she opened her eyes only to find no one around. At this moment, a disturbed Chun descended from the attic. Instead of returning to her room, she went to the dark kitchen and saw a figure sitting at the table eating. Subconsciously, she asked why they didn't turn on the light while eating. As she turned on the light, she was shocked to see her sister stuffing uncooked rice into her mouth. When Chum grabbed a knife, her hand was suddenly entwined with mysterious black vines. However, this didn't restrain her. She easily broke free and ran outside, tripping and falling in the process. As she tried to get up, she saw dead people's feet around her. When she looked up, she saw several hanged corpses. Elsewhere, Joy saw a decapitated head entering through the window. As she screamed, the priest had just finished the ritual. Chum quickly shoved Joy under the bed and crawled in after her, unaware of the bloody ghost standing across the hallway. Chun intently watched the door without noticing anyone opening it. She thought they were safe and was about to sigh with relief when a pair of pitch black feet landed on the creaking floorboards. The ghost relied on people's breath to locate them. Unfortunately, Chum accidentally called out Joy's name, which attracted the ghost. Turning her head, she saw a long-tongued woman appear beside her. Frightened, Chun screamed and suddenly woke up, realizing all the bizarre events were just a dream. After waking up, mother and daughter discovered they both had nightmares, making them want to leave even more. Chun went to wash up and was scolded by her sister again. 
After holding her frustrations for days, she shouted and took joy to find Uncle Lee, only to discover that he had moved out and now lived in a temple. It turned out that Uncle Lee and Chun's father were half-brothers with the same father but different mothers. Uncle Lee and his mother were driven out of the house by their grandfather, and he never returned after his mother's death. Shun and her uncle caught up with each other, while Joy prayed for blessings at the temple. The Taoist priest at the temple offered to read her fortune and discovered that the child was destined for misfortune. However, before he could finish, Chun took Joy away. Uncle Lee bought many snacks for Joy and asked about their reasons for leaving. He empathetically told her that Chun had broken ties with her parents in order to give birth to her. Even though they had argued with their family, they should at least be there for their grandfather's final rites. After hearing this, Joy felt sorry for her mother and suggested that they should stay until the end of the seventh day. They returned to the house, and on the seventh day, Shun went to the room to fetch something while Joy waited in the memorial hall, taking medicine with water that Uncle Lee had provided. The priest urged the family members to take their places, so Joy and Uncle Lee knelt down devoutly. As the wooden fish sounded, Joy became increasingly dizzy, while the priest revealed a smug, sinister smile. On the other side, Chun entered the house and saw her parents, sister, and brother-in-law sitting in the kitchen, silent. So she yelled at them to go pay their respects, and the four of them looked up, revealing their tragic, bloody faces. Suddenly, the house trembled, and the lamp swayed. Terrified, Chun stumbled and fell, retreating backward. Uncle Lee came to help her and was puzzled about what she was doing. Chun wondered how her parents had turned into ghosts. As she whispered her disbelief, Uncle Lee's expression behind her turned vicious. He grabbed a rope and strangled Chun, dragging her to a desolate wilderness. When Chun regained consciousness, she saw four corpses hanging from a tree in front of her, her parents, the sister, and brother-in-law, who had treated her coldly. She realized that the family members she had seen in the house earlier were all her hallucinations, and they had been dead for some time. The culprit, Uncle Lee, approached from behind, removing his gentle mask to reveal his resentful color. He questioned Chun, asking if she knew how he and his mother had suffered over the years. It turns out, he was furious that they hadn't even been mentioned in the will of the grandfather. Chun stated that she didn't want any inheritance from the family, and that it could all go to him. This only enraged Uncle Lee more, because he wanted both the money and revenge. Consequently, he hung Chun from the tree. Meanwhile, Joy was captured by the priest, who covered her mouth and nose. She was too weak to struggle and saw a pair of black feet standing behind the mourning cloth. She quickly called for help, but the priest reminded her not to waste her energy, as her great uncle's control over spirits was even stronger than his. Joy recalled that on her first day here, she saw the words control spirits in her great uncle's notebook. However, a turning point arrived when both mother and daughter fainted. The ghost of Chun's father appeared under the tree and called to her. In fact, after she's kicked out of the family, he had visited Chun years ago to see if she was doing well outside. At this moment, father and daughter were reunited, and he didn't want Chun to die. He exerted his strength to snap the rope suspending Chun and urged her to leave quickly. However, Chun sat on the ground and complained that if they had known Uncle Lee wanted to kill them, why they didn't tell her in the very beginning. The weak brother-in-law opened his mouth to speak, but was burned to ashes before he could finish. Uncle Lee stood behind them with a smug grin, holding a magical instrument, and informed Chun that they couldn't speak because he's controlling their spirits. He then used the instrument to attack the others, leaving the priest to deal with joy. Before he could finish her off, the bell in the living room rang, signaling something big was coming. The priest noticed footprints in the ashes on the ground and quickly prepared to repel the spirits. He thought he had succeeded, but the lamp in the memorial hall mysteriously went out. Panicking, he took out his phone and used the camera to observe. To his surprise, the facial recognition on the camera also worked on the spirits. As he watched something in the camera approaching him, he threw away his burning phone, but was soon knocked out by the ghost grandfather. Seeing that Joy was safe and unharmed, the grandfather transformed into smoke and returned to his place. However, Shun was in a worse situation. Her family had been obliterated by Uncle Lee, and she had nearly lost her life as well. Just then, a brick striking Uncle Lee's head caused him to faint, but she didn't escape in time. Sobbing, she listened to her ghost father's last words and called the police to report the murders. Joy, waiting in the memorial hall, heard footsteps outside and thought her mother had returned. However, the mysterious person who appeared was Uncle Lee, the mastermind behind the events. He tied up Chun and Joy, put them in the trunk, and prepared to drive away. 
As he reversed the car, he saw a figure in the rearview mirror, followed by a ghostly face. Uncle Lee panicked, only to see the ghost grandfather sitting next to him, smirking. By the time the police arrived based on Chun's report, Uncle Lee had been killed, and Chun and her daughter were finally saved. Not long after, Joy underwent a kidney transplant. The kidney came from a relative of hers, so there was no rejection. The surgery was successful, and Joy could live a healthy life. After the doctor left, Chum could be seen sitting in a chair in the mirror, but when the camera pulled back, only Joy was shown in the room. This could imply that Chun might have died soon after being saved, which would explain Joy's kidney donation from a relative. However, this appears not to be the real Joy, as she had an unusually stiff expression when washing her face in the bathroom. Her eyes revealed a hint of ferocity, and she couldn't help but grind her teeth, which resembled Uncle Lee's when he tried to capture Joy as shown earlier. This implies that Joy's spirit might have been controlled and possessed by Uncle Lee, even though he's dead. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.